Hello, CS1 class at El Camino College and YouTube learners. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Professor of Computer Science, El Camino College, Torrance, California. <clears throat> I'm here with C++ video number five. And here we'll discuss design example six, which goes with our lab six. And a very important thing about this video is that my students have gotten a copy of this document. <clears throat> it would be very hard for you to understand this video unless you study this document first. So it's very important that you do not come to this video, video cold. You warm up to this video by studying this document first design document that has been given to you it's about 15 pages <clears throat> but after you have understood first seven or eight pages it will be pretty easy to understand the rest of it so you have to pass a little bit of hump in first eight or ten pages <clears throat> what i'm going to do here is describe background and theory how we kind of design functions and then do IOAA on them, input, output, analysis, and algorithm. And <clears throat> this design example has, okay, that will become clear in a minute how many it has, how many functions it has. I'm not going to explain all of them that is the purpose of the design document. In any case, video will become huge if I described all the functions in the video. I'm just going to give you background theory, analysis, how we arrive with the functions, and just do I of just two of them. Rest, you'll have to read the document, understand. Others are not that hard anyhow there are two functions that are pretty detailed so i'll just cover those in the video and hope you can read and understand the others the whole purpose is to understand some elements of function design which we have discussed in some of the previous videos as well so you can think that if function design is a huge elephant we are just kind of tracing elephant piece by piece in all these videos and this is video number five under the same <clears throat> goal okay so you have written main function ioa so far and some of the elements are same for user defined function but there are some differences for example, main function collects user input from keyboard and or or file. You did that in lab 5. So programmer defined functions can also do that. But there is a very big change. Programmer defined functions may be passed additional data through arguments passed to them. You, you know functions can take arguments. Arguments are nothing but the pieces of data and sometimes they bring data, sometimes they pass data, sometimes they do both. <clears throat> and what arguments pass data to the program or defined function may depend, they should be what, not which, on the parameter passing mechanism. And we have done that. There are two parameter passing mechanisms, pass by value and pass by reference. And we'll just review them one more time. When primary is passed by value, the important thing is that calling block is always obligated to populate the variable that is used when function is called. We have given this example before one more time. If call is made to SQRT like this, <clears throat> then calling block is fully obligated. This is very important to understand. Fully obligated the variable x is populated by the user input or hard code data and user input could be keyboard or file so 
<clears throat> understand that parameter pass by value are never allowed to have a garbage value. We have emphasized that before. Think about it. What would a function do with garbage content passed as a value? Obviously nothing. So this brings into focus the issue of contracts between calling block and called function. <clears throat> contracts are as good as legal contracts. Okay. For example, when you use SQRT function, the contract is this. That calling block will not pass a negative value and or a garbage value or unpopular variable to the SQRT function. That's like one example of the contract. If this contract is broken, then SQRT does not work. Respon responsibility for, for this failure lays on calling block because it broke the function use contract. Thus, function use contracts are essential and inevitable. They cannot be broken. Okay? Yes, pass by value has that. And something similar is there in pass by reference. <clears throat> but parameter pass by reference may or may not be populated depending upon the purpose of the parameter. And the rule regarding their being populated or not populated are as follows. If a called function is used to populate the variable pass by reference, then calling block only need to declare a variable passed to the function. And a little bit later, we have a function called get parameters. Uh, <clears throat> we'll show how this is done in that case. But in the meantime, the figure here shows us this parameter passing mechanism, passed by reference, that calling block <clears throat> has a placeholder argument which does not have any value actually when function call occurs. Well, the called function populates that variable and outgoing new value of the argument is populated for the calling block. So just a placeholder, no value or garbage value and this function will fill it up and outgoing will be <clears throat> a value that is good value. Okay. Figure one. Remember this, we'll use this later. Credit for this figure goes to Dr. Nell Dale at University of Texas, Austin. But the second scenario is that if the call function must use the pass value in any shape or form, then the parameter passed must be populated by the calling block. For example, the print function below cannot print the variable Bible if Bible is not populated by the calling block. Void print const string pass by reference Bible. This cannot be garbage. You cannot pass a const. Anything const that is garbage. So this has to be populated. This cannot be a placeholder. This cannot be a garbage. This has to have some value. Pass by const reference is, is in the previous video which you must have watched already. Another example is swap function below like this <clears throat> where we are saying that this has some value, this has some value, just swap them. Value of this goes here, value of this goes here and obviously swap cannot swap the variable left and right unless both are populated by the calling block and none of them should be garbage. This situation of pass by reference is shown by this picture, again by Dr. Nell Dole, that incoming has some value, original value, function changes in some way, and outgoing has some value. This, something like this you will also be doing in preparation work for lab six and you'll understand this in more detail at that time. Okay. So, considering this background and these rules, we'll be using these rules. 
we can see how we can write the IOA for programmer defined functions. Functions will take input that will be divided into two categories. One is input through parameters. Their data type will be decided by the function header. You have seen that like POW function, SQRT function, the data types are mostly decided. And details must be provided as to which incoming parameter must be populated by the call function. Here we must remember the rules that pass by value parameter always populated. We just talked about that a minute ago. And we must decide whether pass by reference parameter are populated or not. <clears throat> so input by parameters shown in a table also must have information on parameter passing mechanism. We didn't have to worry about that in the main function because input always took place through either keyboard or file, but now we have to worry about whether input is being done by pass by value or pass by reference and whether pass by reference variable has a populated value or is it just a placeholder. And this of course input by keyboard or file was always there, it's still available to use the defined functions. <clears throat> okay. Pro programmer defined function can have output. Now we talked about input, now let's talk about output. Three different ways. Value returned to the calling block, if function returns a value, that means it's a non-void function. Changing the value parameter passed by reference, and this will cause mutation in the calling block. Remember the swap function, that as soon as swap took place in the swap function, right away the mutation took place in the calling block as well. And of course, based on function design, incoming parameters may or may not be populated. Or function may write some value to console and output file. That's another way of outputting value. If we are passing to write to output, if function must write to output file, we must pass an offstream object to the function. Function can also do some output formatting. When that is done, analysis should include the details of output formatting. Function may use global constants as well. Now there is a rule in CS1, I'm, okay, there are a lot of these rules. I tell them to you as we go along. Global variables are never allowed in programs that use programmer defined functions because they are visible in all the functions and any function can change the value that destroys the tractability of variable operations. So you cannot write any variables in the global space before beginning of main function, although constant you always can and always should. Therefore, before designing functions, following questions, questions must be asked and answered. What is the purpose of function or what is, does it do? Answering this question may involve writing a high level algorithm for the function or at least some procedural details. Based on answer one, does function return a value or is it a void function? If it returns a value, then what is the data type of return value? And then we have some parameter passing questions. How many parameters are passed? What are their data type? What is their order in the call list from left to right? What is the leftmost argument? Then argument right to it, then argument right to it, until the last one. And what parameter calling mechanism used? Is it by value, is it by reference? And which parameters in the calling block is obligated to populate? Rule there is, pass by value, always obligated to populate, pass by reference, obligated to po populate if that value will be used in any shape or form, not obligated to pass 
not obligated to populate if passed by reference and it will be filled or populated by the call function or any parameter given default value we will not talk, up, talk about default values in this video but later on there are three or four videos on default values and you'll have to watch that Function analysis. This analysis must analyze all C++ form of arithmetical expression, Boolean conditions implemented in the function. And this part is identical to the way you have done for the main functions in lab 1 to 5. So there's a lot of stuff here you are drawing back on main function. If you didn't understand some of those things so far, here again, you'll have to learn that. And finally, no, not finally number five function algorithm with all the information collected so far we need to write the function algorithm and then last one that's final function coding and testing function can be coded and tested more or less independently of other functions test code itself could be another function such functions are called stubs test data must be such that during test tests all of tests every line of the function code is executed. In fact, military buys no software unless proof is submitted that all code lines have been executed in a function with set of data enough to do that. Understand that all of our steps and processes are not done in a linear manner. You may have to go through many iteration before final IOA input output analysis algorithm and the func function source code is finalized okay so we're going to work solution of quadratic equation with the user defined functions we've done that in lab 3 and I don't want to put all the material in one video so I think this is good enough to stop this video here and in the next one We'll revisit that lab three that you did, but this time we're going to whatever you did in lab three, we are going to kind of identify step by step the software operations that were done, and we'll try to granularize it like each software function. We'll try to make it. Make sure that one function does each. Okay. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier in some of the other videos, you never write God functions. One function doesn't do everything or most of it. Rather, we try to focus that one function does one thing or two things and does it very well. That's the purpose. So, this is Dr. Singhal saying goodbye from C++ function video number five. And there might be two more video in this series before we do other things in the design example six. And I'll see you in video number six on design example six. Thank you.